It has to tune. One is And toss around the throne, and toss around the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching up to Zion, the beautiful city of God. We all refuse to sin, who never knew. Children of heavenly king, you sing that joys abroad may speak the joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. You're marching up to Zion, you're the beautiful city of God. Lord, heals of Zion. Before we reach the heavenly king, before we reach the heavenly king, oh, wonder, golden streets, oh, wonder, golden streets. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. You're we're marching up to Zion. You're the beautiful city of God. Let 
Can we rise for the next song, please? Let's rise as we sing um, hymn 337. Redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the land. Redeem through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeem, redeem. Redeem by the blood of the land. Redeem. So happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me does until all he dwells. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. Amen. We'll have an opening prayer from Justin Omoro. Good evening, everyone. Please bow for prayer. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to meet today, knowing you are our Savior. We're very grateful, knowing you are our Savior. Thank you for making all the people making it today, allowing us to make it to this evening, this new month. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody, happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath on this side. I'm requesting those on that side to come, to come over to this side so that we can um, have one meeting. Please, please, let us uh, come to this side so that we can have one one meeting. At this time, just want to praise God for yet another opportunity He has given us to be alive and well to be in the house of the Lord. It takes great courage for people to come to the house of the Lord where when they, they can go to so many other places. And you know, David said somewhere that he said for time, he said I was blind and they told me to do what? Go into the house of the Lord. Our feet are study right there. If we build in one day that is spent in the house of the Lord, is better than how many? A thousand spent elsewhere. So you are in the right place. 
and you are here because God has appointed you to fulfill a certain purpose for which nobody else can uh, fulfill. At this time, I want to thank God because um, he has brought us here. And he has said, my house shall be called the house of what? Prayer. So we are here to pray, to thank God for all the things that he has done. Now, this time, I want to ask if there is anybody who is something to praise God for. This is your opportunity. Do not hold back. Because when we praise God, when we praise God, blessings come down. So when we, when we have the opportunity, don't hold back. Let us use this opportunity to praise God for what he has done. So if you have anything you want to praise God for, it's the opportunity. And if you have a prayer request, bring it to the Lord. He cares. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not do what? Yes. Everything is done in faith. So if you are here, you have a praise report, or you have a prayer request, this is your opportunity. And I'm so happy to see all of you and all those who are standing in, how we pray that the Lord will quicken your steps so that together we can reap a blessing from the God of the universe. Blessed be his holy name. Anybody? Mr. Kazan is here. I think we can. We need to get another mic so that we... Good evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath to all. Yeah, I just want to thank God for this week of prayer. I want to appreciate God for the organizers and the, the youth, the children. God has really blessed us with uh, children that are that the Lord. So I want to thank all the children, all the youth that were in attendance. Thank you. God and for the organizers, the Lord Almighty will continue to bless you and uh, may He continue to shower you with more anointing to be able to continue to exploit for the Master in Jesus' name. Thank you. And I have unspoken prayer requests. Thank God, He is, He answers even before we speak. Yes, Stephen. I just thank God that we are all being saved. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Praise God for safety. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I give amen. God thanks and praise for another day, another opportunity that I'm in the land of the living. I was reminded on Facebook of the memories and where I was testifying of God's goodness and his favor upon the Oxley family. And so I want us to say thank you, Lord, for bringing us thus far in our lives. Thank you for your presence in the, in the life of my husband, myself, my children. And I pray, Lord, for the young people here that you would keep them, that the enemy will not snatch any one of them any one of us, but that we will keep on this journey, on this path, and that there will be a shining light, an example um, in, in, in their homes, in their schools, and wherever they go, that it will reflect the goodness of God upon their lives, upon all of our lives. So I just want to give God thanks and praise. And young people, do not ever be shy of testifying of the goodness of God. You don't have to say a lot, but you can just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my mouth, my eyes, my feet, my legs, my organs. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Very true. Anybody else? Yes, my sister. 
I just want to thank the Lord for saving a friend of mine from an accident with the deer this week that rendered her car almost um, completely um, totaled. But I thank God that um, she came out with no single scratch. So um, I just thank God for that. I'm also thanking God for his healing mercies. My cousin who lost his mom has been down um, health-wise this week, but I'm grateful to God that um, he's, re he's recuperating and he's getting much stronger. Thank you, Sister Amarachi. I want to thank God for travel mercies. I uh, had family and friends come in town for the weekend, so for them to come in and pray for I praise God for that. And also, um, just thank God for for his keeping power. Um, you know, the fact when I look back and see the many years when God met me as a as a young adult to now still be able to still be in the faith, I just thank God. Because obviously I've seen many people who've come into the church and have left out um, and left the faith, left God altogether. So I just praise God for his keeping power as well. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Thank you. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I want to thank God for strength because last year um, I'm double jointed and I always dislocate my, my hands a lot in sports. And this year I have not dislocated at all. And I want to thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Yes. He has kept you safe. Yes. Wow. Anybody else? Close you out. Steven, you have something else? So, like, that we all have a good day? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you have a good day in the house of the Lord. Good evening, church. Good evening. I'm going to stand for this. Um, I want to thank the Lord for the way he has uh, been good to me and my family. Um, he has blessed us with two wonderful children. Uh, one of them is uh, Eric and uh, Victoria. And uh, Eric uh, went through college. Uh, we didn't have to pay a penny because uh, the Lord provided and he had a scholarship for all the four years of his college. So I'm standing here a second time begging the Lord because uh, one of the universities that have accepted Victoria she also gets to go to school for free. So um, we thank the Lord for the way he continues to shower his blessings upon our family. And I just want to read uh, Psalms 37, 25 that says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God has been so good to my family. Amen. So at this time, uh, Sister Taisha, you are there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we are going to, to go on our knees, and we are going to thank God and bring our petition before the throne of mercy, where we can uh, find grace such a time as this. And you know, the world over, there is chaos. Even the rich are crying. Just today, we were told um, the wife to the prince of England has cancer. And imagine all that uh, chaos. And still, they could not keep him out of the, of the Buckingham Palace. So when we find ourselves in this place, we should not take it for granted. The other day, a university bus with full of students going for sports got into a road accident, and 15 of them died on the spot. Others are fighting for their lives in hospitals. So for us to be here, it's not something we can take for granted. Ask for those in Haiti what they are going through. 
I saw a picture the other day of a few young men eating um, the flesh of another person who was dead on the roadside. And here we are opening our, our fridge and saying there is nothing to eat. And we shut it and we start shouting that there is no food. When all these things are happening, it's not because we are better than those people. It is because God has given us. It's just mercy. And we should not take it for granted. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. We should be careful. We should walk circumspectly, redeeming time, for the days are what? For the days are evil. Young people, if there is, was a time to look up and live, it is now, not tomorrow. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in your prowess. Don't you trust in your academic credentials. Trust in the God of the universe. Let us pray. Let us go down to our, on our knees and pray. Kind and loving Father in heaven, we come before thy presence tonight. We thank you because you are mighty, you are holy, you are the alpha, you are the omega, you are the beginning, you are the end, you are who you say that you are. And Father, this evening we have no words but to thank you for what you have been to each and every one of us. The young people have come to your house tonight to seek your face. Father, look upon them with favor, divine favor, because we need you. They need you. We need you, God, for such a time as this. As young as they are, they have come to seek your face. Father, hearken to their voice, hearken to their cries. Hear them, Father. Walk with each one of them in these days and time when the devil is too busy or moving about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. May it not be any one of these young people who are here and even those who may be uh, listening to the sound of my voice on the internet or elsewhere. Father, have your way in each and every one of them. Father, they have come here thanking you for protection. They have come here thanking you for the food they eat every day, for the good health. They have come here. We have come here to say you deserve all the glory and all the honor. And we are so insignificant in thy presence. We know were it not for you, where could we be traveling on a dark road to nowhere. But Father, you have brought us here. You have pulled us here by those cords of love. And we can't take it for granted. So Father, we invite your presence here. We invite your presence in our lives. May you continue abiding with us as we usher in the holy 
hours of the Sabbath, Father, please come and abide with us. May your Holy Spirit be present in this place. Even when your man servant rises up to speak your word, may you use him in a mighty way to convict souls and to elevate us to the throne of grace where we can find mercy and grace for such a time as this. The world over, God, people are crying out. Some don't have food. Others are in war-torn places. Others are just, they have just given up. Lord, I pray a prayer of faith that, Father, you visit these people. They are your people. You created them. Father, do not let the devil take full, full control before you seal all your servants. Father, I pray that you visit those places. I pray for those who are sick, that Jehovah, you touch each one of them. You are able. You are the great physician. The power that you had then when you walked the streets of Jericho and Jerusalem. When you went to the villages doing good, you still have that power. Manifest it to every person who is suffering in one way or the other. Lord, touch us and we shall be whole again. And Father, I pray much more about our, our spiritual condition because without it, without holiness, no man is going to see you. So, Father, I pray that you revive us spiritually, that you draw us closer to thee day by day, that we may always be at your presence so that we can enjoy eternity with you. Father, I pray for all those who have unspoken prayer request. Father, you know it. You know what they are going through. Father, may you meet each and every need that is represented here and elsewhere at each and every person's point of need. Have your way. Father, we thank you for the young people. Continue abiding with us. Continue abiding with Pastor Green as he even gets up to speak your word. Thank you for this church. Thank you for every person who is here. Blessed be your holy name. And when you come back in the clouds of glory, I pray each and every one of us will find a place in that kingdom you went to prepare. Forgive us our sins. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, at this time, I have the honor to introduce the speaker of the hour, and indeed it's a great honor to introduce a man of God, and um, his name is Pastor Wally Green. He comes, he was born and raised in the beautiful island of Jamaica, right? Am I right? Very good. And Pastor Green is a, is a marriage officer. He's a pastor. He's a youth man, mentor, an inspirational speaker, and a doctoral student at Andrews University with a concentration in intergenerational church like the one we have here in Houston International. Pastor Green exists to be a cord in God's hand to enrich each life spiritually, socially, mentally, and intellectually. He is married to one wife. Am I right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> and together they have been blessed with three daughters and one son. Pastor Green currently serves as a pastor in the South Bahamas Conference of the SDA Church. He is passionate about AY 
and club ministries. After the song you are going to hear, the next voice you hear is that of Pastor Green. Tomorrow he will be introduced in more elaborate terms. But uh, looking at this young man, you wonder how he has been able to serve God in such capacities, in such a short time. Indeed, it shows when you serve the Lord, you can count any loss and you do exploit in him. So, Pastor Green, you are welcome here at home. And I think uh, this time I will invite whoever is, has a music to come in and usher uh, the speaker of tonight. God bless you. Come. We need your help, in other words, young people. Come, come help us sing this song. It's an easy song. They know it, right? Fire, the <laughs> and their words on the screen. I am excited this evening, Sister Marachi. My brother is here, for those who might know, not know him. <laughs> Nico, my brother is here with my nephew and niece uh, visiting. We want to invite you to join on stage. They've been practicing at home as well. So, Akello, come on, uh, come on down. Nuogu family, come on down. This is, there's no rehearsal, so you can't make any mistake anyway. We're just praising God. Uh, there is a candle. And any adult who wants to join can come. <laughs> Chelsea, come on down.
Let, let's all right. Here we go. After Pastor um, Jones, everyone that is behind, so I don't have to look around the corner, just come, let's fill up right the, these two, these two um, benches here so I can see you closely, closely. All right, so my eyes, not, my, you see, I have to wear, um, you know, um, glasses, so I want to see you. So after, pa you don't know Pastor Jones? Because I don't see no one moving. <laughs> yes, he's right there. So everyone after Pastor Jones, come on. Hey, we want you to come right up here, right up here. The more we are together, the happier we shall be. All right, all right. Look at the movement. And these are the two. Yeah, I'm talking these two. These two, right? So I said these two, yeah. These two, these two, all right. So these are, and of course, this is for the reserve for the spillover. All right, so let's come on up. Let's come on up. Come on, all right. That's all right. That's okay. That's okay. All right, so let's fill them up. Let's fill them up. Let's fill them up. I want you to be close, close together, close together. Let's come on. Let's be close together. There we go. There we go. Awesome, awesome. You are looking awesome. Do you believe me? I said, you are looking awesome. Do you believe me? All right. If you don't believe that you're looking beautiful, you're handsome and all, you could just come here and look at yourself. All right? So seeing that you can't do that, you have to take my word for it. It is such a blessing to be here um, over this weekend. Starting tonight, I am feeling blessed just to be here with you. I believe it was in January. Or something like that, that um, I see Sister Anna make contact with me. And I was saying, who is this? I realized uh, my very good friend, um, Paco, um, actually connected us. Um, so it's good to be able to be here. And by the way, that's the Associate Youth Director for the General Conference. And he sends his love to you, the young people of the Houston International Seventh-day Adventist Church. Hello? Come on, man. I know he's going to watch this, so you got to make sure that he knows that you love him. He sent his love to you. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Pastor Jones, it's so blessed to be able to be here with you and the little chit-chat we have since we come. I realize um, you know also my senior pastor. Um, so it's good to be able to be here, and you have a mighty man of God who is serving you as you serve with him. I was listening to him um, this morning, <laughs> and I realized I have to do some changes for tomorrow. <laughs> um, but, but one of the things that I take away as he was talking about the three C's, um, uh, talk about um, visitation, evangelism, fellowship. There's another one. What's the other one? Huh? Fellowship. No, I said fellowship. There's another one. There's a, so, so make sure that you have these four, I think it's four C's um, in communities down pat. And listen, this church will continue to grow and do great work for God. All right, so Sister Hannah, I'm just going to cut the chit-chatting now. She asked me to talk with you tonight. So I'm going to talk tonight, and tomorrow I'm going to preach. Right? So I'm going to talk tonight, and tomorrow I'm going to preach. Um, so I want you to, to engage in what we're going to talk about today. So first, I want to do a selfie, right? Are you down for that? All right. So let's do a selfie. We'll start here with a selfie. All right. So I'll do one here. Come on. Do something. Come on. Yeah. All right. Let me come closer. All right. There we go. All right. So we'll do one here. All right, that's a selfie there. All right, and a selfie there. All right, there we go, there we go. So we're going to go online with that. All right, so I want someone to read what you see on the screen. Okay. All right. 
Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your grace and your mercies. I confess even now that I'm feeble and frail and as frail as can be. If you can do anything, Lord, you sure can do it now. So speak to me and speak through me and me as we talk today, tonight. Our hearts will be touched by your word. May, O oh God, at the end of this message, that there will be those who will turn from dead works to righteousness. We pray it and we believe it in no other name, but in the precious name of Jesus. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. So who would like to read this for me tonight? All right. All right. So, sister, all right. there we go. There we, let me see. Joanna Ola. All right, Joanna. All right, now read this on the screen for me. So the first one above the sky says surface. Then, then the one that's, un that's in the water says below. Okay, so we have surface and below. All right, so, so just read it. Just read it. Surface and below. Surface and below. All right, so we have two more. All right, so all right, there we go, there we go. We have some brave scholars in the house. All right, let's go. Surface and below. Surface and below. All right, let's see. Surface and below. All right. Let's try again. Who want to try? Who want to try? Take a bite at this. You want to try? All right, let's go. Surface and below. Surface and below. Anyone else would like to try? All right, let, let's go. Below and surface. Below the surface? Below. And surface. And surface. Right. Go again. You want to try? So it's below surface. You're correct, but you say and. So it's below surface. Turn to your neighbor and say below surface. Below surface. Yeah, this is important for us to look at because many times when we live our life, we live our lives on the surface. We live our lives, in fact, we are in a, a, a fast-paced world. Say fast-paced. Yeah, where people have no time. No time for children, no time for friends, no time for even their self. People are so busy being busy. So as a result of that, we find ourselves living too many times at the what? At the surface. But today, tonight, I want us to go a little bit deeper. I want us to go below surface. So you might have come across this portion of scripture before. It says, and I want you to read it like you believe it. After two, one, two. So the word of God is clear here. It says, you should do what with your heart? Guard your heart. I want you to do this now. Guard your heart. Yes, guard your heart. Wakanda forever. Right. So you got to guard your heart because out of your heart, according to the word, some things flow from it. Everything flows from your heart. So the word of God, by the way, this, is a, this, this guy who wrote this, he is the smartest guy, the wisest man that ever walked this, the face of this earth. His name was what? Yes, Solomon said, above everything, guard your heart, for out of your heart flows everything. Everything comes from your heart. So the truth is, we really don't do that all the time. Am I right? Am I right? Um, yeah, we're, 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 we're talking tonight. So, so we don't always do it. In fact, this is not new. Have you ever heard about the Titanic? Oh, yes. You heard? Yeah, so... Everyone have heard about, this is a romantic ship. Hello? Yeah, before you get in any relationship, hold a youth, make sure you watch a Titanic. Listen, hello? So it's a romantic ship. This was a nice ship. It was beautiful. You know, everyone wants to get inside of the Titanic. It was beautiful in its splendor. It, it, from the outside, it seems as if this ship has everything that it needs. In fact, the ship has a outside, which is the upper deck, and the ship also has the lower deck. 
So in, in the upper side of, of the ship, there was where all the rich folks were. They were partying. They were living their life. They were playing music. Uh, you know, they were just being amazed by the beauty of the ship. It was the first that was made of its kind. So they were so taken by the outside, the upper deck. But there was something else that was happening on the lower deck. Beneath all the beauty, there was something that keeps the ship going. There was something that keeps the ship moving, the engine room, the lower deck. In fact, in the lower deck, they were like the poor folks. And these folks, they were the one that keep the ship going. They, these folks were the one that were less fed, but they keep the ship going. These folks on the lower deck, they were the one that would once in a while come to the um, higher deck, clean the ship, and go back to the lower deck. These people were below surface, but they were not given any attention. And not only that they were not given any attention, they were not regarded. Just like how sometimes we do not focus on things beneath, but the, the, the story of the Titanic tells us, by the way, it's a true story, that the ship eventually reached a place where they saw an iceberg. And because these people, they were surface thinkers, because these people, they were surface focused people, they thought that this iceberg that they saw, this gigantic ship, could easily burst through this iceberg. So they ran into this iceberg, and, the, uh, and, and I was going to say the Bible. And the story tells us that the iceberg caused an impact below surface. But what was happening with their thinking? Question. What was happening with their thinking, young people? They were thinking where? Okay, so where was the impact? Below surface. So they have gone through the iceberg now. They face a little, you know, shaking effect. They, they felt a little turbulent, but they were still focused above surface. And as a result, it was not long before the issues of the lower deck rises up to the upper deck because they were so immersed on the surface, they were not immersed below the surface. Are you with me? The issues of the lower deck will at some point rise to the top. It happens. So all of a sudden, the issues that perhaps they could have locked off certain areas of the ship, if they were focusing on the lower deck, they, they would have been able to to save this ship from the disaster of a story that it was. Many lives were lost. In fact, we know even today, people are losing their lives trying to find the Titanic. So, tonight as we talk about this issue of focusing on what is happening in our lives Below the surface, it's very important, it's very critical for you and I to take the time to, to, to consider what are those issues that are happening below our surface. I'm wondering if we can get some sound on this. Can we get some sound on, on, on the PowerPoint? Yeah, so, so, all right. All right. Oh, yeah. All, all of this should, should have been going on, but that's all right. All right, so the issues, keep it plain, keep it plain. The issues that are happening below the surface of our lives will rise to the top. Solomon said, what is in your heart? What's your name, brother? <coughs> Zion. Zion. All right, so Zion, what is in your heart, it will rise to the top. So what is in Larry's heart, that's me, 
it will rise to the top. Good or bad, whatever is inside will surface to the top. You know, this is our reality. We're taken by social media. I told you, I, I took a selfie right now. And before long, you look on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, it will be there. Yeah. But sometimes, social media can absorb so much of our attention, so much of our focus, so much of, our, of, of what we do, so much of our time, that we find ourselves only focusing on the surface. Now listen or watch this and tell me the truth. I'm going to take six responses. Watch this and tell me the truth. Does this resonate with you? Okay, all right, who's going to talk first? What do you get from this? You're living a fake life. Living a fake life. You're fixing people. Certainly. <laughs> They're using makeup to like tell about how they're not like their personality. Okay, so they're using makeup to tell what they're not to enhance their personality. Uh, sometimes what is on social media isn't actually reality. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Sometimes what is on social media 
is actually not the reality. That's three. I need, I need one. I need three more. Three more. I'm just going to pull up in your corner. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, I agree with what this young man said. It's, it's true. Yeah, yeah. false reality. And um, I noticed that people find happiness in what other people think of them. Yeah. What's your name? Mary. All right, Mary. That's awesome. Here we go. So, like, they put on stuff that looks beautiful, then post it on Facebook whatever, then then they post it, then people start liking it, thinking that it's their personality. Instead, it's not their personality. Right. All right. On target. On target. So that's, that's the truth. In fact, I could drop the mic right here, and I'm done. Because that's the essence of it. You see, many times, what people shows us are not the truth. What you see on the surface is not what is happening below. And it's not only about people, ouch, right? It's about us too, right? Sometimes what we show on the outside is not what is happening on the inside. You know, and we talk about reaching the city, right? But, you know, pastor spoke about Jonah, and the, the powerful message there is that, you see, God wants to reach us too. And sometimes we are so empty on the inside. We are so torn on the inside, you know. We are so broken on the inside. The truth is we look content. We look joyful sometimes. We seem as if everything is going on. But deep down there are suicidal thoughts. Deep down there is drug addiction Deep down there, not only drug, drug and all kinds of addiction, all kinds of issues, all kinds of habits that you're trying to get away from, but you're torn all through. Inside, in inner, deep down, you're broken, you're bewildered, you're battered, and you're bruised, and you're saying, can I get out of this state? You want to get out of that state. And maybe the process that you need to follow to get out of that state, you believe if you should go that route, if you should walk that route, it will be too long because you need to keep on showing people on the outside that it's all good. Am I right or am I right? I don't, you're, you're silent here. I need to go to another church then because see, this is not resonating. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, so, so you, these issues, God wants us to know that he knows about them. You see, God knows about our faults. He knows about our issues. He knows about our brokenness. He knows about our fears or anxieties or depression. And God wants to meet you and I where we are. And he wants to deal with the issues that are happening below the surface of our lives. Say, God meets me where I am. If it is fear, God meets you in your fear. If, if, if it is anger, God meets you in your anger. If it is anxiety, depression, loneliness, or aloneness, whatever it is, God meets you there. I always say this. I think this is for um, such an evening, but in, in case I forget it, let me say, listen, God knows where you are before you get to where you are. Hello? All right, let me save the rest of that for such an evening. But God knows where you are before you get to where you are. So let's, let's focus a little bit below surface. So am I busy posting but just not growing? Can take a good picture. I've been to Houston International Church. Hey, Sabbath was hype. But did I leave growing? Man, oh, the preacher was lit. 
Did you hear Pastor Jones last week? But was I belit by the word of God? You know, it's one thing to go into the house of God. It's another thing to have the house of God being inside of you. Right? Right? Hello? Right? So we got to go below surface. We, we won't take time to go deep down within because we have often been what? Discipled into what? Yeah. What's not real? The fictitious, the fake. Listen, say no fakers around here. Yeah, none, none, none. No fakers around here. Not even me. So we have no time to fake. We have to allow God to come in my heart. You see, David was a guy that used to fake so much. He was, in fact, he was a king, but he was a faker until he reached that point where he realized that just posting will not help him. He realized that what is trending on his Facebook or Instagram page or his Twitter, it will not help him. So he said, listen, stop right here, God. Create in me a new heart and renew a right spirit. Say right spirit. Right spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say right spirit. right spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say neighbor. God is going to give you a right spirit in your heart. Oh, yeah. So God's going to give you that right spirit in your heart. You see, the right spirit that God gives you, it changes everything. God changes us, not from the outside in, but God changes us from the inside out. All right? So superficiality works against us. Are you with me? And as a result, you will have problem navigating the serious issues of life. And listen, we're going to face some issues as long as you're alive. Is it true that young people don't have tr struggles? Is it true? Well, you got to talk back to me. All true, all true, all true the weekend. Yeah, is it true that young people doesn't have struggles? Oh, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Listen, and the devil is behind it with a fork. Hello, somebody to eat. <laughs> but listen, it's not true. Everyone goes through struggles. From the youngest person to the eldest person. That's why the moment you are born, you cry. Listen. Yeah. You ask me, and if you're not crying, the nurse or the doctor will put a spank on you to make sure you cry. Let's, once your lung is working, once you're breathing, you will have problem. You will have issues. And for you to deal with those issues, you need somebody inside of you that is greater than your problem, greater than your issues. And that person is? That's Jesus. We're talking tonight. So Romans 12 verse 12, it says, listen, cut it. Get to the in-depth stuff. Real stuff. He says, listen, do not be conformed to the world, but be what? By what? Touch your mind. Touch your mind. Say, so renew this God. God, renew my mind. Change my mind. So if God gets in your mind, that's all he needs. So the word of God, it says, do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So then you will be able to discern what is good, what is acceptable, what is per perfect. All of a sudden, because God renews your mind, you understand your purpose in life. Because God renews your mind, even when people try to bully you, people try to, to destroy you, even when your bills are due, even when you, you, you have more headaches than anything else, God renews your mind, and in your pain, you can have things from a vantage point. You have a different perspective. So you're in the problem, but you're seeing things above the problem. Are you with me? Is a renewed mind. So God said, I want to get in. Ecclesiastes, listen, 12, 13 said, no, all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the entire matter. Fear God and keep his commandment for what? 
So the commandments of God, do you know them by the way? They're in only two parts, love God and love each other. You know, and, 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 and if you know those commandments, if you find the commands of God to be your light that direct you. In fact, the psalmist David puts it this way. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He was referring to the oracles of God, God's laws. So if you know God's law and you start to practice them, you start to ask the Spirit of God to help you to live according to every word that proceeds out of the word mouth of God. Why? Say why. No, you don't see him. Say why. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. So if the word of God... God's commands, God's directives, God's instruction, God's blueprint comes in your life. All of a sudden, you will be sanctified. What does that mean? You will be set apart. You will be different in the city. You will be making an impact in the city. And the city not making an impact in you. Are you with me? The difference is, is not that you're so heavenly minded that you're not earthly good. The difference is, is that you are so heavenly good that you are a world of a good to the city that you're in. What's your city? It's your circle. It's your friendship. It's your relationship. It's your neighbor. What's your city? It's that person that is on the bus, on the train. What's your city? It's that person that is in the classroom playing with you on the park, like sliding down on the, yeah, the, sl the slide, right? Going on all those fun stuff. That's your city. Your city is wherever God placed your feet. Because he said, listen, I will bless you so that everywhere your feet lays, it's yours. So everywhere God sends you, you're an influence. You're an influence. Yeah, you are a positive influence. You are more than ordinary. You are an extraordinary. I say this to my children all the time. I say, listen, you got to say it like you believe it every day before, we, before they leave the car. They have to say it. I say, I am a child of God. I was created in the exact image of of God. I am, and they call their name. I say Larry Green, and I was created in the exact image of God. They have to say it. They have to believe it. They have to know that, listen, they are filled with purpose and possibilities. Work on the inside. Work on the inside. So, what use it makes to focus on the fake stuff and not go in depth? What do you think? Talk to your neighbor for one minute. One, one minute. And, and, ask, and ask your neighbor this question. Talk about it for one minute. Yeah, because, listen, it makes no sense I'm the only one talking. You have a lot going on in your mind right now. See? So, so let out some of that. What use are the superficial change we make if we neglect the deep work God wants to do in us? Turn to the person next to you. Talk just for a minute. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So, you see, when we start to talk about these things, see, you're still talking, that's good. Yeah, keep it going, yeah. Right, you see? So when you start to talk about it, you're bringing the issues on the table. And it, the, the thing is, too many times we don't bring the issue on the table. For you to deal with the issues below, you got to bring it on the table. You got to talk about it. You got to bring it into perspective. As a young person, as a, as a child, you know, as adults, you got to bring the issues to the table. All right, the iceberg hit the ship. And you got to say what it is. You got to say, listen, listen, this is happening in the house. 
You got to say, this is happening in the relationship. You got to say, this is happening in my heart. And the moment you start to say, listen, I'm spending more time on that certain game. Well, for the children, it's roadblock. Ah, yeah. The other one, no, yeah. <laughs> I, t- I tell my children, I stopped buying roadblock. <laughs> Because my protesting not working. <laughs> right? So, so they have to get to the place where I can maybe spend a few dollars on it again. But listen, right now, I don't know. I can't deal with that. But what are you spending more times on? So, take this challenge this week. Um, how long you spend on, on the game? You don't want to tell me? All right. How long you spend on the game? Real talk. I'll play games. Huh? I'll play. You don't play games? <laughs> Take him out. Take him out. To the edge of the city and stone him. <laughs> to the edge of the city and stone him, man. <laughs> all right. How, 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 much, all right. Real, how long you spend playing? Not much. Right? Not much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You watch videos. All right, so here's videos. Who, who is games? Who is videos? Who is, let me see the gamers. All right, let me see the videos. All right, all right, the YouTubers. The, uh, all right, let me see the social medias. All right, yeah. So, so ask yourself the question. I ask myself the question. Listen, so when I wake up, the first thing is in my mind is, where is my phone? My eyes can't open. Because you, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm coming from darkness to light. And I can't open my eye, but I'm finding the phone. Hello? Well, that's only me. Nobody else have that problem. Oh, right? Yeah. So all of us have that problem. So what I have to do, I have to bring it to surface. Say, let me talk about it. Mm. So if I'm finding my phone more than I'm finding God, it means, therefore, at some point, my phone is going to become my God. Hello, somebody. Whatever we spend the most time with, that is what we will become more like. Just like that. Listen, so if that's my reality, I got to dig it and I got to say, listen, I'm going to have to deal with it because if it is not dealt with, listen, Titanic going under. The issues on the lower deck will at some point reaches the upper deck. Are you with me? Are you with me or are you not with me? All right, that's great. So elements of effective spirituality. Let's look at it. We're going to go through these quickly. Elements of effective spirituality. All right, so the rise of apps, social media, and, and you know, all different kind of digital and te- technological AI, you talk about it, you know? You know all of them, right? So, so uh, what happened is that the way many of the world, two billion Christians practice their Christianity and worship, it, imp- it is impacted by social media. That's a given. That's a given. So, let, let's just, so too much digital engagement keeps us from showing up for real life. Yeah. Showing up for real life. So, ask yourself the question, how much time you're in the room away from your other siblings or your parents, um, uh, and uh, while you could be talking about something, you could be playing together, but you're on, on these platforms. This is how you really identify it, you know. And I'm not just talking something in the air. I'm talking because I've gone through the process. Hello? I've gone through the process, too. I've gone through the process. Even though at my, at my time, it was not um, Instagram. It was something you call I-5. You don't know about that. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, they don't know about these stuff, right? I'm 40. Yeah, Pastor soon will reach my age. You look young, but listen, it's coming up. <laughs> right, right. So, so listen. I was immersed in these stuff as well. In fact, I, I, I am conversant with all the social media apps that's out there. But you see, I, I reach this point where I'm able to deal with the issues on the lower deck. Right? And, and, and reconfigure what happens on the lower deck. Because something got to happen on the lower deck. Listen, and that's why Jesus say, early in the morning, he gets up and he go to worship. So early in the morning, he pulls for his phone and he pulls out a Bible app. And Jesus starts to read it. 
It's in the Bible. Read it. <laughs> so Jesus, he spent time alone working on the issues that is below surface. And if he did not do that, can you imagine when these guys pounce upon him in, in, the, um, in the temple, ready to ambush Jesus, and he knew he, had, he could call 10,000 angels, he could, he could destroy them. But he was able to regulate himself, you know, uh, because he spent time alone with God, right? So when you spend time fixing the issues with God on your lower deck, right, you will be cool and real on the surface. So what does an authentic, vibrant spiritual life look like? What does it look like? I need two answers. Two answers. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's right to the point. Right up there. Cut the chase. It looks like Jesus. Looks like Jesus. And what does Jesus' life look like? We start to talk about it. He spent time alone with God. So, uh, so, how do you do that? You have inward disciplines. And maybe you can take a snapshot of this right now, or a little thing. I'm, oh, oh, you have a, is, oh, sorry. Let us go. Sorry, I missed you. Here you go, buddy. The question was, what does real, authentic Christianity look like? All right, so, so, so here we go. Meditation, prayer, fasting, study. In fact, this week, as we look at, I, I, I believe it was yesterday, no, Wednesday night, one of these nights, it talks about how you can deal with depression. It talks about you deal with depression through community. You deal with depression through prayer and communion with God. You deal with it through, through counseling, etc. So here it is that you can deal with the, the, the surface issues, the, the below surface issues. Meditime. Meditate. Challenge yourself this week. This is your week challenge. Spend two minutes every day. Every day where you're not on your phone, but you're, you move into a, 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 sta a state of silence where you start to reflect on your life and God. So you're not reading nothing. This is not, this, this is not the point where you're reading your Bible. It's not the point where you're reading a text message or you're scrolling on, you know, the shorts or whatever. You know, th this is a time where you're just thinking about yourself and God. What is happening in my life? What God has to say about that thing that is happening in my life. And you're just thinking about it. Just think. Think. In fact, spend 30 seconds right now. Right now. You're not talking to your friend. You're not listening to no one. But you're just thinking about what is happening in your life. And what God has to say with that. Think, 30 seconds. Do that this week for two minutes. Two minutes. Contemplate with God what is happening in my life and what God has to say about that. Deep reflection with God. Then, why not end it with prayer? Pray for a minute or maybe a couple seconds. But add to that two minutes this week another minute, three minutes. Three minutes praying to God about your inward discipline. Lord, now as I think about what is happening in my life beneath the surface, now God, I'm presenting them to you. You can pray in your mind or you can pray out loud. 
Maybe you're in a place where you can't pray out loud because you don't want nobody to know those issues that is happening at that point. So you're going to pray to God. One minute. Praying to God. Why not try that right now? Try praying to God right now. For a minute. So by praying, you're paying attention with God. Notice you're not informing God in your prayer because he, because he knows about what you're going to pray, pray about even before you pray. Now you're paying attention with God. So after you meditate, you pray. Spend some time fasting and pray. Fasting. Maybe it's one day in the week. You're saying, or maybe one day as a man, Pastor, that's going to kill me. All right, so maybe, all right, give five hours that you say, listen, I'm not going to check my message. I'm not going to, or maybe you say, I'll check your message, but you know what? I'm not going to go on social media for five hours. That's a fast. Something that usually absorb most of your attention, now you're putting it in regulation. And you're saying, I'm going to give that some time. Fasting. Inward discipline. Then pull for the word of God in that time. Maybe this is a simple, powerful scripture. Read over and over John chapter 15. For that five minutes or where, wherever that, that, you're, that you're fasting or, or how long it is. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Inward discipline. I'm not going to go through these. But then you also have the outward discipline. When the inward disciplines are settled, then you're able to deal with simplicity, solitude, submission, and as we have been focusing on this week, service. And then from the inward to the outward, then you will have corporate discipline. What you do together, what we do together as a church. This year is a corporate discipline. Confession. If you do some, some, someone something that's wrong, you know, go and talk to them. If there's an issue in your friendship, go and talk about it. Worship. When we come to worship, listen, just let loose, let go. Lift your hands and worship God. Listen, allow the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit to consume you. Have you ever been to that place where you're worshiping and tears just start gushing down your eyes and you know it's not because of pain, but it's because of the blessing. It's because you feel the palpable presence and power of the Holy Spirit. That's what true authentic worship is. And God said, those that worship me must worship as such. It is called in spirit and in truth. It's like when you just get to that point where you just lift your hands, you're not worrying and say, search me, oh God, and, and know my heart today. See if there be any weaknesses in me and cleanse me from everything. It's that place when you come to worship, you're just singing out loud. You're just praising God. You're just responding to what God is saying to you in your mind without any fear. I know right now, right now, you are in worship because God is speaking to you. 
I, I, I know that you're in worship because right now the Spirit of God is telling you some issues in your life that you've been struggling with. And he's saying, I'm going to break it now. I'm going to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's a power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So that's why you just, it comes in your mind, you just let it out. The person looks at you, is he crazy? Is she crazy? Do you know that song? Do you know that song? Let's end it there. Who knows this song? Who knows this song? You know this song? Come on, let's sing it. Can, if, if we can get it, I think we can end right here. I have some other stuff I was going to say, but listen. We can end it right here. Ellen White, in one of my favorite books, Step to Christ, page 44, says, Whatever shall draw away the heart from God, must be given up. We cannot be half the Lord and half the world. We are not God's children unless we are entirely by healing up your will to Christ. You ally yourself with the power that is above all principalities and all power. You, she said, will, be, will have strength from above to hold steadfast and thus through constant surrender to God. You will be enabled to live the new life, even the life of faith. If that's not it, I don't know what's it. That's where God want to take us. You know, that's where God wants to take us. Where we are focusing on the deep things that matters. Let's sing this song. I'm, I'm going to stop here. Let's sing this song. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. And I want you to intentionally... Respond to God. Intentionally allow God to move you from where you are in your life to where He wants you to go. To move you from dissatisfaction into satisfaction. To move you from emptiness into being filled, to move you from being broken to be mended. Let's sing this song. There is power. There is power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus to break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Again, let's sing again. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Name of there Jesus. is power, power in, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. There is power. There, there is power in the name, name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. If you want God to break a chain in your life tonight, you want God to break a chain in your life tonight that perhaps no one else know about, but you want a chain to break. I'm going to ask you, 
just run to the altar. Right now. Right now. Just move from where you are and just come to the altar. Break every chain. 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 Let's sing this song. That needs Rising to be broken. Just move Lord. from where you are and allow God to do There's something miraculous, something powerful, something transformative in your life to right break now. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's hold it a little bit. As Pastor Jones is going to pray for us tonight. I'll make one more appeal. Just the same. And then I'll make another. If there is something in your life. Right now. That you are struggling with. Something in your life right now. That you are not settled with. You're not sharing it with no one but God. But you're saying, God, I'm asking you to work with me right now. To take me to the altar to deal with the issue of that chain. And you're where you're at right now. Just move to the altar. Let's, let, let, let's pray together. Bless the Lord, sister. There is power in name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, yes. break every Obviously. chain, break every chain. Yes. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Can you hear the chains falling? Can you hear the chains falling? No, the last call. And you see, when I come, I don't know who is who. That's a good stuff, Pastor. Lord, just put something on your, on your heart and you just talk. So, should you be here tonight and you have not yet given your life to Jesus and baptized, chains are broken in the watery grave of baptism. Listen, hearts that are frozen are melted in the watery grave of baptism. See, God specializes 
in moving the unmovable, melting the unmeltable. God specializes in that. But he's saying, listen, I want to do more than just fill your fridge. I want to do more than just break an addiction. I want to set you up for eternity. I want to set you on a path of eternal progress. So if you have not yet been baptized, and you're saying, that's me, that's me preacher. I don't know you, but God knows you and you know yourself. And you have not yet been baptized. You say, listen, I think, you know, it's time for me to open the word of God and study and be baptized. I think I need to make Jesus first place. And you have not yet been baptized. I just want you, just like popcorn in a microwave, just pop your, right, your hand right up. You have, bless your Lord, bless your Lord. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. There's another. There's a. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Just put them out. Yeah. Yeah. You have not yet been baptized. Pop, just like popcorn. And, all right. So what I want you to know, come right here with me. 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 Yes. 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 Come. I saw some hands over there. I saw some. Come past. Come past. Yes. 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 You see, the, the, there is power in God. I'm telling you, there is real power in God. You know, the, uh, a, a few weeks ago, I, I, I was invited to go to um, a, a youth conference in um, I, Idaho, in Idaho. My first time going there. First time in Idaho. I was like, where am I, God? With some young people. And the Lord spoke. And I saw young people came to the altar and they wept bitterly. And I was wondering what was happening. What was happening? And then afterwards, and I started to speak to those young people. I said, listen, this is what I'm going through. These are the issues in my life. But tonight, they said, that, that, very, that Friday night, they said, tonight, I see that God loves me. And he's going to break it. I'm telling you, those people, those young people who were not been baptized, that very next Sabbath, they were in the water, Pastor. They were in the water because they believed in God, they trusted God. And listen, as I look back on um, um, Gem State Academy, you go on Facebook and you see these very same young people. They are they are so excited. They found a new life. They found new purpose. They all of a sudden have greater vision for their life. Listen, keep locked in, in your desire. 
desire to be baptized. Keep locked in in your desire for your chains to be broken. And God will shatter those chains. And God will seal you. Not for time, but for eternity. We'll get their names right. Your heads are bowed. And your eyes are closed. Servant of the Lord says, it's in the stillness of the atmosphere, just like this, that the voice of God becomes more distinct, more personal, more real. So as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed and your hearts are turned heavenward, we pray. Yes. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the word that we've heard tonight. And God, we recognize, Lord, that we have to go deeper than the surface. Oh, God, that we have to seek a deeper relationship with you, Lord. So, Father, we just pray for those who came up, those, Lord, who have reaffirmed their desire, Lord, and affirmed the desire to be baptized. Father, we pray that you would seal their decisions, Lord. And, Father, we just pray, God, that this would be a, a new day, Lord God. You said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so, Lord, we know we must be born of the water and of the spirit. And so, Father God, as they have stood, Lord, as a public declaration that they would like to be baptized, Father, again, we pray, Lord, as we move on this global week, this is what this is all about, God. This is about young people making decisions, Lord God, and certifying their desire to serve you for their life. So, God, bless them, we pray. Bless us all here, God. And, Lord, help us to go, Lord, again, deeper than the surface, Lord God, and seek uh, a relationship, Lord, that is just absorbs all of our lives. Lord, bless us. We pray. We thank you for the word that was brought to us, Lord, uh, by Pastor Green. God, we pray that you continue to bless him as he continues to minister to us this weekend. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, all right. So this is how we move. This is how we move from the altar. So we move. First, you're going to sit here, and um, I believe Pastor and the Elder is going to have a word with you. But this is how you move from the altar. Turn to someone. Turn to someone. Turn to someone. Turn to someone. And I want you to minister to that person next to you. Let that person know that the chain will be broken. And that God loves them. Just minister to that person next to you. Minister at the altar. Minister, minister, minister. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. 